Hey, better sax players. Today, I'm gonna to teach you an easy two, five, one lick. As always, there's a free PDF download that goes along with this lesson, so let's jump right into it. Jay Metcalf here from bettersax.com. If you wanna get better at playing improvised solos, one of the best things you can practice is licks and patterns. The idea is not to learn a bunch of phrases by rote and then to plug them in here and there to create sort of paint by numbers solos though. Rather, we want to build a large vocabulary of these phrases so that in the moment, we can improvise our own melodies using the fragments and building blocks we've learned in the process. Now, it's very important to take phrases like the one we're about to learn through all 12 keys. If you've never done this before, I challenge you to download the PDF for this lesson and Go learn it in all 12 keys. It might take you a day, it might take you a week, doesn't matter. The result is gonna be your saxophone playing is gonna take a giant leap forward. This lick is similar to the sort of stuff we've been working on in the Better Sax Studio, where each month students get access to new video lessons on jazz improvisation, along with backing tracks and other downloads. Many of our students there have begun to learn phrases in all 12 keys for the first time, and the progress we've seen as a result has been incredible and inspiring. The best part about this program is that students are able to submit videos and recordings of themselves playing for direct, personalized feedback from myself and the other instructors. We've got an amazing group of dedicated and supportive sax players who are motivating each other on a daily basis. We get together for regular live streams and the whole thing has just been a huge win for everyone involved. If you'd like to learn more about the Better Sax Studio, I put a link in the description below. We do have room for a few more committed sax players who are ready to take their playing to the next level and beyond. So first, let's listen to the lick in its entirety. I'm playing this on an alto saxophone in concert B-flat, putting me in my key of G. I'm going to talk about everything in the key of G. And now one more time, a bit slower. You can take any 251 lick and break it down into fragments. As I said earlier, when we're improvising, we're basically creating melodies by combining little melodic ideas and fragments from our own vocabulary to make solos. So let's take a look at what's happening here and break down this particular easy 251 lick. So the whole lick is basically eighth notes until you get to the very last note, and each measure has a new chord. If we take the first part of this, we're just going up the two chord uh, using the Dorian scale from the root. This is as basic as it gets. Uh, we're just going up the scale. For this next fragment, we've already gone up the scale to the fifth of the two chord. Then we jump up to the seventh and change direction and then start going back down the scale. But what we've got here is what we call an enclosure where we have a target note, in this case, the F sharp, and we enclose it with a lower neighbor and an upper neighbor. In this case, the lower neighbor is the E a whole step below and the upper neighbor is the G a half step above. That F sharp makes for a nice target note because it's the third of the upcoming chord, the D7. We are arriving one beat early, but that's okay. For our next fragment, we're going down the scale from the root of their D7 chord, and we're adding in this chromatic passing tone between the root and the seventh scale degree. Some of you might recognize this as the bebop scale, which is very commonly used in the all jazz improvisation, really. By the way, if you're feeling a little bit lost with all the talk of chord tones and scales, I've put together a course explaining all of the music theory you need to know to learn jazz improvisation. It's called the Harmonic Foundation, and I've put a link to that in the description below as well. 
The second half of this measure, we've got another fragment, which is basically a mirror of the, the earlier fragment that had an enclosure in it. This time we've got another enclosure. The target note is the G, the root of the next chord. Uh, we are playing a lower neighbor, which is half step below this time, and the upper neighbor is a whole step above. And finally, we get to this final fragment, which is a very common pattern. We can call it the one, two, three, five pattern over the G major seven chord. This pattern is often associated with John Coltrane's solo on Giant Step since he played it quite a lot in that solo. But this is something you're going to hear no matter what you're listening to in jazz. It's going to be found everywhere, really. So as you can see, this easy 2-5-1 lick will get you practicing enclosures. If you take this through all 12 keys, you're going to have played two of the most common ways to do an enclosure starting on every single note. Your fingers are going to remember the work you've put in and that sort of language is going to start coming out in your improvised solos. So let's listen to the whole lick again. Now let me point out a few details that you may not have noticed. First, this lick follows a pattern where the root of each chord is played on the downbeat of each measure. I built it that way on purpose. I'm calling this an easy 2-5-1 lick, so I wanted it to be very obvious for anyone starting out learning this stuff. Effective 2-5-1 licks will often have chord tones landing on the downbeats, especially where the chords change. In this lick, every downbeat is a chord tone. Now, when I say I built this lick, what I mean is I took a bunch of melodic fragments from my vocabulary and put them together in a logical and musical way to create a phrase. I learned these fragments from listening to great improvisers in the jazz tradition and transcribing what I heard. So my lick ear is not so much a completely original idea. It's more like when you rearrange the furniture in the living room. You've got the same couch and coffee table, but when you put them over there, it changes the whole feel of the room, right? Once you've learned enough jazz vocabulary, you'll want to start experimenting with this on your own. Take a bunch of different melodic fragments and try rearranging them. To get the PDF download for this lesson, click the link in the description below and then fill out the form you find on that page. That'll get you immediate access to the Better Sax Shed, which has all of my free downloadable resources and lessons, and there's a lot of them over there right now. Look for the Easy 251 lesson in the list and feel free to browse and download all of the other free lessons you find over there. Also, check out my other courses over at bettersax.com as well as the Better Sax Studio for the best online learning experience. And if you got some value out of this video, be sure to click the like button, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, and please leave your comment below. I love hearing from you. See you in the next video.